The Grazing Cap Project took a brief detour from the grazing lands and headed to the grocery store and the classroom. First up, a question for consumers. Well, first we did a study uh, just to find out what consumers were thinking about beef, whether they were still eating as much as they used to, what their concerns were, and whether they knew that there was any connection or suspected there was any connection between the beef that they were buying, the prices they were paying, and climate change or climate variability. Barbara Brown, food specialist at Oklahoma State University, said beef buyers weren't aware of the backstory that a severe drought led to the sticker shock. And so what we found was that they like beef. It's one of their favorite protein choices, but that they were eating less, but not because of climate variability. They were eating less because it was costing more. So they were missing that connection between those two factors. Weather versus climate. Weather. The training Brown developed focused on understanding that link between climate variability and beef production. So we talked to them about what is climate, what is weather, because most of us have a pretty good concept of what weather is, but it's a little different than climate. And so we talked about those factors, what may be contributing to uh, variability in climate, whether or not uh, it's something that cattle have a contribution to, and if so, how much. The survey uncovered another reason consumers were limiting their beef purchases. Nutrition was one of the big ones. They've been told by their doctor, you're eating too much or don't eat any red meats. And so we talked about how beef does have a role in a healthy diet by the kind of cuts that you choose, by choosing leaner cuts, by looking at the amount that you're eating, so smaller, more appropriate serving sizes. Food waste serves as the single largest component going into municipal landfills instead of feeding people in need. The training included teaching consumers how to limit their impact on the environment by not overbuying. One of the things we look at with food waste is how much are you buying? Are you buying things too much of something and then ending up throwing it away? What are some of the tricks that you can use when you go to the supermarket? Can you plan ahead a little bit better? Can you look, uh, be a little bit less tempted when you're at the market so that it's on sale, I need a lot? Well, you might want to buy a lot, but can you use a lot before it goes bad? Extension educators are using this curriculum titled, Does Climate Change Your Plate? to help consumers make better decisions about beef purchases and find ways to limit their own environmental footprint. Lessons are also offered in traditional oh classroom settings. Um, well, we want to take today to think back uh, to what we did with the Dust Bowl, right? And you guys did an amazing job. Um, you figured out our big question was what caused the Dust Bowl. This sophomore biology class at Crooked Oak High School in Oklahoma City is using a lesson from the Grazing Cap funded curriculum. We mainly talked about the Dust Bowl and how many people struggled through it and how many people have problems farming due to the drought. I don't know, you ain't never watered a plant? They look at the ecosystem that was up in the panhandle before the Dust Bowl, before the dust storms and they look at the dust storms and they look at the after the dust storms and they can really see how the ecosystem changes. I would say, right, that they were kind The lesson was developed through the K-20 Center, an educational research and development center based at the University of Oklahoma. Heather Shaffrey is a science specialist um, at K-20. Scale, like, students need to know how their world works. They're consumers of food, they're consumers of information, and if they're not exposed to it to understand what the facts and the reality are, but also how to analyze and to question the things that they're hearing, um, they run the risk beyond even just the food aspect of being misinformed and making really important decisions based on misinformation. The Grazing Cap Grant offers teachers a unique opportunity to prep for these lessons in a real-world setting. Well, I'll tell you, without uh, the USDA's funding, I wouldn't have been able to participate in a, a program or a camp or a professional development like this. Teachers spend four days at the Blue Stem Agri-Learning Center at the USDA's Grazing Lands Research Laboratory at Fort Reno, Oklahoma. 
they get dirty in the field, they go out and wander through the grassland that is out there and they dig into the soil. To have that hands-on experience with an expert who then um, can show me how to do it so that I can come back and, and take it to the students. The science-based research from the Grazing Cap Project is educating students and consumers, leading them to become better decision makers and ultimately better stewards of the environment.